Are you aware what is snapback zone? Case study. A bulk carrier was discharging cargo alongside a mineral terminal. In order to reposition the vessel, the terminal requested the vessel's master to shift ship approximately 100 meters astern. At the required time, the crew were ordered to their mooring stations, and the main engine was placed on standby, ready for use. The plan was to move the vessel astern using only the mooring lines, which were to be transferred from bollard to bollard by the shore linesman, with an ebb tide running from ahead. During the shifting operation, the master became concerned that the vessel was developing excessive stern weight and ordered the forward and aft mooring parties to check the movement using the forward headlines and the aft back spring rope. On the poop deck, an AB tightened up the back spring winch brake and as the strain came on the rope, it parted without warning. One end of the rope snapped back violently and struck the second officer. The injured seaman suffered broken ribs and serious internal injuries. So how did this happen? This accident was the result of a loss of control during the shifting maneuver. Proper consideration was not given to the effect of a strong ebb tide on the vessel. Additionally, the main engine should have been used before control of the vessel was lost. A synthetic fiber rope will stretch under tension, and if it parts when under load, the sudden release of stored energy will cause it to snap back with great velocity, risking death or injury to anyone who gets in its way. It was determined that the rope parted due to local abrasion damage at the point of failure, combined with the AB over-tightening the winch brake, preventing the brake from rendering below the braking load of the rope. A snapback is the sudden recoil of a mooring line as a result of its failure under tension, as per CEOS, WP, and MOG4 entire mooring area must be considered as a snapback zone. It is also recommended that a bird's eye view of the mooring deck is produced to identify potentially dangerous areas for the same clear warning signage must be provided winch brake testing must be carried out yearly for 60 of SDMBI limit. MSMP and LMP must be maintained along with the mooring certificate and running hours. Snapback zone has been tested ashore. See the results. One is attached between two points with a 90 degree angle in the middle. One bollard is representative of the bollard found on the wharf at the ship's berth and is used to anchor one end of the line. The other end of the line is connected to a custom guillotine and is mounted on a bogey that moves with the line as it stretches. The point of rupture on the line was at the capstan, located in the middle of the ship. Where the line changes direction is the ship's fair lead, which in our case is the redirection bollard. We install the protection fence in front of the redirection bollard. Speed and energy of the rope, the path the rope travels, and the effect of the broken rope hitting the protection fence. It is essential that sufficient personnel are detailed to attend the mooring operation and that the activities to be undertaken are adequately explained and supervised by a deck officer. One. In the event of an unusual or non-standard mooring operation, it is recommended that a new risk assessment be completed before the operation commences as they will potentially have associated hazards not covered within the risk assessment done for a standard mooring operation. 
2. Maintain mooring equipment and ropes. 3. Over-tightening the winch brakes is dangerous. 4. The whole mooring deck is a snap-back zone. Ask yourself these questions. What personal action can you commit to to avoid an incident like this on your ship? What are the procedures and controls on your ship that would prevent this from happening? What could cause those procedures and controls to fail? What can be done to make the procedures and controls more effective? Share with your seafarer friend to make awareness.